This is usually only for a limited time. The exclusive rights are not absolute but limited by limitations and exceptions to copyright law, including fair use. Copyright is a form of intellectual property, applicable to certain forms of creative work. Under U.S. copyright law, legal protection attaches only to fixed representations in a tangible medium. It is often shared among multiple authors, each of whom hold a set of rights to use or license the work, and who are commonly referred to as right shoulders. These rights frequently include reproduction, control over derivative works, distribution, public performance, and moral rights, such as attribution. Copyrights are considered territorial rights, which means that they do not extend beyond the territory of a specific jurisdiction. While many aspects of national copyright laws have been standardized through international copyright agreements, copyright laws vary by country. Typically, the duration of a copyright spans the author's life plus 50 to 100 years. Some countries require certain copyright formalities to establishing copyright, but most recognize copyright in any completed work, without formal registration. Generally, copyright is enforced as a civil matter, though some jurisdictions do apply criminal sanctions. Most jurisdictions recognize copyright limitations allowing fair exceptions to the creator's exclusivity of copyright and giving users certain rights. The development of digital media and computer network technologies have prompted reinterpretation of these exceptions, introduced new difficulties in enforcing copyright, and inspired additional challenges to copyright law's philosophic bases. Simultaneously, businesses with great economic dependence upon copyright, such as those in the music business, have advocated the extension and expansion of copyright and sought additional legal and technological enforcement. History Copyright came about with the invention of the printing press and with wider literacy. As a legal concept, its origins in Britain were from a reaction to printers' monopolies at the beginning of the 18th century. Charles II of England was concerned by the unregulated copying of books and passed the licensing of the Press Act 1662 by Act of Parliament, which established a register of licensed books and required a copy to be deposited with the stationer's company, essentially continuing the licensing of material that had long been in effect. The British Statute of Anne further alluded to individual rights of the artist. It began, whereas printers, booksellers, and other persons have of late frequently taken the liberty of printing books and other writings without the consent of the authors, to their very great detriment and too often to the ruin of them and their families. A right to benefit financially from the work is articulated, and court rulings and legislation have recognized a right to control the work, such as ensuring that the integrity of it is preserved. An irrevocable right to be recognized as the work's creator appears in some countries' copyright laws. Copyright laws allow products of creative human activities, such as literary and artistic production, to be preferentially exploited and thus incentivized. Different cultural attitudes, social organizations, economic models and legal frameworks are seen to account for why copyright emerged in Europe and not, for example, in Asia. In the Middle Ages in Europe, there was generally a lack of any concept of literary property due to the general relations of production, the specific organization of literary production and the role of culture in society. The latter refers to the tendency of oral societies, such as that of Europe in the medieval period, to view knowledge as the product and expression of the collective, rather than to see it as individual property. However, with copyright laws, intellectual production comes to be seen as a product of an individual, with attendant rights. This parallels the ways in which capitalism led to the commodification of many aspects of social life that earlier had no monetary or economic value. Pache, the Statute of Anne was the first real copyright act, and gave the publishers rights for a fixed period, after which the copyright expired. 
Copyright has grown from a legal concept regulating copying rights in the publishing of books and maps to one with a significant effect on nearly every modern industry, covering such items as sound recordings, films, photographs, software, and architectural works. Prior to the passage of the United States Constitution, several states passed their own copyright laws between 1783 and 1787, the first being Connecticut. The Copyright Clause of the United States Constitution authorized copyright legislation to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries, that is, by guaranteeing them a period of time in which they alone could profit from their works. They would be enabled and encouraged to invest the time required to create them, and this would be good for society as a whole. A right to profit from the work has been the philosophical underpinning for much legislation extending the duration of copyright to the life of the creator and beyond, to their heirs. The original length of copyright in the United States was 14 years, and it had to be explicitly applied for. If the author wished, they could apply for a second 14-year monopoly grant. But after that, the work entered the public domain, so it could be used and built upon by others. Thomas Jefferson, who strongly advocated the ability of the public to share and build upon the works of others, proposed as part of the Bill of Rights that a short time span be protected. Art. 9. Monopolies may be allowed to persons for their own productions in literature and their own inventions in the arts for a term not exceeding years, but for no longer term and no other purpose. Copyright law was enacted rather late in German states. And the historian Eckhard Hofner argues that the absence of copyright laws in the early 19th century encouraged publishing, was profitable for authors, led to a proliferation of books, enhanced knowledge, and was ultimately an important factor in the ascendancy of Germany as a power during that century. The 1886 Berne Convention first established recognition of copyrights among sovereign nations, rather than merely bilaterally. Under the Berne Convention, copyrights for creative works do not have to be asserted or declared, as they are automatically in force at creation. An author need not register or apply for a copyright in countries adhering to the Berne Convention. As soon as a work is fixed, that is, written or recorded on some physical medium, its author is automatically entitled to all copyrights in the work and to any derivative works unless and until the author explicitly disclaims them, or until the copyright expires. The Berne Convention also resulted in foreign authors being treated equivalently to domestic authors. In any country signed onto the convention, the UK signed the Berne Convention in 1887 but did not implement large parts of it until 100 years later with the passage of the Copyright, Designs and Patents Act of 1988. The United States did not sign the Berne Convention until 1989. The United States and most Latin American countries instead entered into the Buenos Aires Convention in 1910, which required a copyright notice on the work, and permitted signatory nations to limit the duration of copyrights to shorter and renewable terms. The Universal Copyright Convention was drafted in 1952 as another less demanding alternative to the Berne Convention, and ratified by nations such as the Soviet Union and developing nations. The regulations of the Berne Convention are incorporated into the World Trade Organization's TRIPS Agreement thus giving the Berne Convention effectively near-global application. The 2002 WIPO Copyright Treaty enacted greater restrictions on the use of technology to copy works in the nations that ratified it. Scope Copyright may apply to a wide range of creative, intellectual, or artistic forms, or works. Specifics vary by jurisdiction, but these can include poems, theses, plays and other literary works, motion pictures, choreography, musical compositions, sound recordings, paintings, drawings, sculptures, photographs, computer software, radio and television broadcasts.
and industrial designs. Graphic designs and industrial designs may have separate or overlapping laws applied to them in some jurisdictions. Copyright does not cover ideas and information themselves, only the form or manner in which they are expressed. For example, the copyright to a Mickey Mouse cartoon restricts others from making copies of the cartoon or creating derivative works based on Disney's particular anthropomorphic mouse, but does not prohibit the creation of other works about anthropomorphic mice in general, so long as they are different enough to not be judged copies of Disney's. Note additionally that Mickey Mouse is not copyrighted because characters cannot be copyrighted, rather, Steamboat Willie is copyrighted and Mickey Mouse, as the character in that copyrighted work, is afforded protection, in many jurisdictions. Copyright law makes exceptions to these restrictions when the work is copied for the purpose of commentary or other related uses. It should be noted that U.S. copyright does not cover names, title, short phrases or listings. However, there are protections available for those areas copyright does not cover, such as trademarks and patents. Copyright laws are standardized somewhat through international conventions such as the Berne Convention and Universal Copyright Convention. These multilateral treaties have been ratified by nearly all countries and international organizations such as the European Union or World Trade Organization require their member states to comply with them. Exceptions to Copyright There are some exceptions to what copyright will protect. Copyright will not protect names of products, names of businesses, organizations, or groups, pseudonyms of individuals, titles of works, Catchwords, catchphrases, mottos, slogans, or short advertising expressions, listings of ingredients in recipes, labels, and formulas. However, the directions can be copyrighted. Obtaining and enforcing copyright. Typically, a work must meet minimal standards of originality in order to qualify for copyright, and the copyright expires after a set period of time. Different countries impose different tests, although generally the requirements are low. In the United Kingdom there has to be some skill, labor, and judgment that has gone into it. In Australia and the United Kingdom it has been held that a single word is insufficient to comprise a copyright work. However, single words or a short string of words can sometimes be registered as a trademark instead. Copyright law recognizes the right of an author based on whether the work actually is an original creation, rather than based on whether it is unique. Two authors may own copyright on two substantially identical works. If it is determined that the duplication was coincidental and neither was copied from the other, in all countries where the Berne Convention standards apply, copyright is automatic and need not be obtained through official registration with any government office. Once an idea has been reduced to tangible form, for example by securing it in a fixed medium, the copyright holder is entitled to enforce his or her exclusive rights. However, while registration isn't needed to exercise copyright in jurisdictions where the laws provide for registration, it serves as prima facie evidence of a valid copyright and enables the copyright holder to seek statutory damages and attorney's fees. The original holder of the copyright may be the employer of the author rather than the author himself, if the work is of work for hire. For example, in English law the copyright Designs and Patents Act 1988 provides that if a copyrighted work is made by an employee in the course of that employment, the copyright is automatically owned by the employer which would be a work for hire. Copyrights are generally enforced by the holder in a civil law court, but there are also criminal infringement statutes in some jurisdictions. While central registries are kept in some countries which aid in proving claims of ownership, registering does not necessarily prove ownership, nor does the fact of copying necessarily prove that copyright was infringed. Criminal sanctions are generally aimed at serious counterfeiting activity. 
but are now becoming more commonplace as copyright collectives such as the RIAA are increasingly targeting the file-sharing home internet user. Thus far, however, most such cases against file-sharers have been settled out of court. Cost of enforcing copyright In most jurisdictions the copyright holder must bear the cost of enforcing copyright. This will usually involve engaging legal representation, administrative and or court costs. In light of this, many copyright disputes are settled by a direct approach to the infringing party in order to settle the dispute out of court. Copyright notices in the United States before 1989, the use of a copyright notice, consisting of the copyright symbol, the abbreviation, COPR, or the word, copyright, followed by the year of the first publication of the work and the name of the copyright holder, was part of U.S. statutory requirements. Several years may be noted if the work has gone through substantial revisions. The proper copyright notice for sound recordings of musical or other audio works is a sound recording copyright symbol, which indicates a sound recording copyright, with the letter P indicating a phonorecord. In addition, the phrase all rights reserved was once required to assert copyright, but that phrase is now legally obsolete. In 1989 the United States enacted the Berne Convention Implementation Act amending the 1976 Copyright Act to conform to most of the provisions of the Berne Convention. As a result, the use of copyright notices has become optional to claim copyright because the Berne Convention makes copyright automatic. However, the lack of notice of copyright using these marks may have consequences in terms of reduced damages in an infringement lawsuit using notices of this form may reduce the likelihood of a defensive innocent infringement being successful. Poor man's copyright, a widely circulated strategy to avoid the cost of copyright registration is referred to as the poor man's copyright. It proposes that the creator send the work to himself in a sealed envelope by registered mail, using the postmark to establish the date. This technique has not been recognized in any published opinions of the United States courts. The United States Copyright Office makes it clear that the technique is no substitute for actual registration. The United Kingdom Intellectual Property Office discusses the technique and notes that the technique does not constitute dispositive proof that the work is original nor who the creator of the work is. Exclusive Rights Several exclusive rights typically attach to the holder of a copyright to produce copies or reproductions of the work and to sell those copies, to import or export the work, to create derivative works, to perform or display the work publicly, to sell or cede these rights to others, to transmit or display by radio or video. The phrase, exclusive right, means that only the copyright holder is free to exercise those rights, and others are prohibited from using the work without the holder's permission. Copyright is sometimes called a negative right, as it serves to prohibit certain people from doing something they would otherwise be able to do, rather than permitting people to do something they would otherwise be unable to do. In this way it is similar to the unregistered design right in English law and European law. The rights of the copyright holder also permit him, her to not use or exploit their copyright, for some or all of the term. There is, however, a critique which rejects this assertion as being based on a philosophical interpretation of copyright law that is not universally shared. There is also debate on whether copyright should be considered a property right or a moral right. Useful articles If a pictorial, graphic or sculptural work is a useful article, it is copyrighted only if its aesthetic features are separable from its utilitarian features. A useful article is an article having an intrinsic utilitarian function that is not merely to portray the appearance of the article or to convey information. They must be separable from the functional aspect to be copyrighted.